What's going on, sports card hobby family? We are back another day, another Friday. It's another sports card video. Jeff Wilson making some big declarations about 10xing his store cards HQ. Enjoy my crew. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. You take the card and put it in the sleeve. Do we think that it has legs? And I've actually got a few ideas that I think could be good in that particular store. Before we get started, huge thanks to our shout outs, our Tuesday and Friday shout outs. Guys, if you want to participate in this, you've got an eBay store you want to promote. You've got a whatnot store you want to promote. You've got a card show coming up you want to promote. You're taking cards to a card show or you're a small business in the hobby that's looking for some added exposure. Reach out to me directly at SportsCardDad on IG. Or if you're more of an email person, I've got my email in the video description. Reach out to me directly. Today, we start with Wooten Sports Cards Whatnot channel with 10,000 followers, five-star reviews. The guy pretty much sells out every week his inventory of sports cards. I mention it. He has got a flurry of football card stuff that I really like. And so if you are a card collector, definitely check out Wooten Sports Cards on Whatnot. VintageBreaks.com and Vintage Breaks on YouTube. Vintage set breaks on the site like a 1952 Topps Baseball near set break, which includes Mickey Mantle and Willie Mays. PSA ones. And not only does Vintage Breaks sell vintage packs, set breaks, and box breaks, they also sell high-end modern breaks like 2023 Prism Basketball Hobby Boxes. So you get the full spectrum. The one thing that makes Vintage Breaks highly unique are the bonuses, the vintage cards, the giveaways. In fact, speaking of giveaways, for new customers, new customers are giving away free spots and their 1964 Tops baseball set break for anyone who goes to their live YouTube chat and mentions Sports Card Dad, they will take care of you on the spot. Also, any Sports Card Dad viewer who registers will also be entered into a free giveaway that ends on March 10th at 4 p.m. Mark your calendars. That lucky viewer will win a free spot in the 1952 Tops baseball near set break for a chance to win that Mickey Mantle 52 tops in a one. Frank, do we have pictures? Get pictures up here so the people can see what we are talking about. Unbelievable. Check out VintageBreaks.com and the Vintage Breaks YouTube channel. Also, don't forget Jay at Duckin Cards on IG, D-U-K-K-E-N Cards. I'll put a picture up his IG account. This guy is the master of non-sports, entertainment cards, culture cards, however you want to say. He's got vintage Disney. He's got all sorts of vintage non-sports, which I know has gained a lot of popularity here recently. You might be a vintage baseball card collector, a vintage football card collector, and not have realized that there's some really cool vintage Disney cards. There's vintage Wizard of Oz cards, all sorts of different things. So make sure to check out Jay's IG account immediately. All right, Jeff Wilson did his weekly It's Jeff Wilson show. He brought on the two operators over at Cards HQ just to talk shop a little bit, give some additional feedback. I like the transparency because I like to hear what's going on. And then frankly, it's good content. It's great for me to make content with. So there we go. All right, so Jeff comes out, talks about some of the pros, the cons, the challenges, live streaming, he has talked about this, man. He has double, tripled, quadrupled down on live streaming, not only being the future of Cards HQ, but the future of retail, which gets some people really, really riled up because it is a grandiose statement. All right, so he said, so far, 3,000 cards sold via live streamings, and he added at good margins. And most of these cards fall in the $30 to $100 range, which is really a great sweet spot because look, most people are not buying $1,000 cards all the time or $10,000 cards all the time. Most collectors slash speculators slash investors in quotation marks, they're buying more of kind of that lower end stuff. Is there some opportunity, some upwards opportunity for those cards? Could it go from 50 to 100? Could it go from 100 to 150? Or in that price range, you can get your favorite players. Maybe you don't really care that much about values. Maybe you just want to have a bunch of Bobby Bear cards like I do, New Orleans Saints stuff. I want Dalton Hilliard rookies. Graded Dalton Hilliard rookies are probably five to 10 bucks. So the whole idea of being able to offer kind of a bevy of these types of cards, a plethora, if you will, you want that bread and butter to be in that probably that $25 to $100 range and just selling 
that in tons and tons of volume. One of the operators did say that they have a focus around just speeding up sales and being able to sell cards in the you know 20 to 30 seconds you're selling a card. And I'm sure if they can do the math on that, you can look at, okay, if we're selling a card at a five or $10 margin and we're selling one every 20 or 30 seconds and we have X amount of people doing that, there's a math equation there to see how that all adds up as part of the overall business. The one thing that Cards HQ has going for it, you can't argue, is there are multiple streams of income that are already happening, but also available to you. There's a lot of different ways for Jeff Wilson and these guys to draw revenue to this store. Whether it be content, whether it be live selling, whether it be breaking, selling online. They also use uh, Joe's uh, Got Baseball Cards, Joe over there, do their grading submissions. I'm sure they probably take a piece of that. There's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of opportunities for revenue in the store. The one thing that I think that we haven't seen yet, so they talk a lot about live selling here and just ramping that up. I do think I do think that breaking is probably going to need to be a significant part of the business. I, along with a lot of other folks, are not a huge fan of breaking, especially when you have a lot of young people in the store. It can be exciting in the store, but there's also kind of the, the gambling element to it. And so I think it's just kind of creating some balance around it. And I'm not sure exactly how you do that, but I do think for this store, you know, to really kind of hit on all cylinders, there will need to be a healthy breaking environment where they do have some good margins built in on the breaking side. I don't know if that's going to be, you know, two breaking stations or five breaking stations or whatever that looks like. I think breaking will need to be more of a profit center as they move forward. I've got a few ideas for other kind of income generators. Nothing crazy that hasn't been thought of before, but just I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen them promote it or, or offer it yet. There was talk on this stream about challenges of having enough singles. You know, if you're going to go into selling, 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 you want to ramp that up, you've got to make sure that you've got enough cards to be able to sell. And so I know that there's, you know, talk about people, they bring their collections in or buying collections online. You know, you're always buying from kind of the, the customers that are opening boxes and they want to sell back to you and that sort of thing. But I don't know if going to shows and spending a lot of money going to, to big shows, if that is going to be profitable or if it's just kind of a means to an end. Like we have to do it. It's an expense to get inventory. But then I'm thinking like you have a big shipping center why wouldn't there be someone, and maybe there already is, maybe one or two people that are just strictly dedicated to finding deals online? That way you're not traveling people out to a card show to try to get people to sell to you at a good rate and that sort of thing. I guess what I'm wondering is once you tr add in the travel costs and everything, you know, the, the cost to set up and the cost to do all that, and then you factor in those cost expenses against you know, what you're making from someone walking up and you're paying 70%, does it make sense to do that or does it make more sense to just buy deals online? There are deals every day, auctions that sell. We all see it. There's cards that will sell under comp all the time. So you might have a comp for $30 here on a card and one at $60 or, oh, there's one that sold at $80 and there's another one that sold at $150 and it just slipped through the cracks on an auction because there wasn't somebody there to buy it or there wasn't as much interest at that particular second when the auction ended. And so I think there's actually a lot of opportunity just to get deals buying cards online and that can be your inventory. Maybe you're buying eBay lots, you know, you're buying lots of cards of different players and you're able to turn those around for a profit in the store. You've got this you've got the shipping space and that way you're not sending people out. You've got you got a couple of people in the store that are just buying all day on eBay or PWCC or Golden. We've got so many selling sites now. There's so much competition among selling sites. There are deals to be had. There are deals that fall through, the cards falling through the cracks at the auctions to where I have to believe that if you turn that around in your store, you can probably sell it and make you know that 15, 20, 25% or whatever you're looking for, or maybe more on certain cards. One thing I heard Jeff talk about previously that I haven't seen yet, repacks. Repacks, of course, being a very, very controversial product in the market because look, repacks have historically been used to get you know, fake cards through and BS through and, you know, stuff that people don't want through. There's a lot of negatives to repacks, but I do feel like if you are someone that sets it up properly with a checklist and everything, you can do it properly. There are repacks that are popular for a reason. I know David Adams does it. What is it? Hit Parade does one. Um, Brian Gray at Leaf has been doing repacks for a long time. I've seen P, uh, P. Ryan Collection has done it with his own inventory, but he basically builds it out in a way to where it's kind of foolproof to where you are going to get value out of the repack. It's not you're, you're buying a $50 repack hoping to get a $5,000 card and it's a bunch of $5 cards in there or it's, you know, it's a repack of $1 cards and you get absolutely hosed. 
you know, I think that there are some good ones out there. You have to be careful how you do it. I believe that Jeff would be careful because all eyeballs are on him on this store. I don't think he wants to have some bogus repack that he's offering, but that could always be an option. The other thing is they have a huge event space there. We were there for Culture Collision. We went to that trade night. We, there's, there's endless talk about how much space, 14,000 square feet. Why not have more of kind of the live events and why not have them paid events? You know, a trade night, that's 10 bucks entry. People, oh my God, I can't believe I have to pay $10 to go in. Well, I've got four kids and I can tell you $10, I, it's, it's $10 for me to go watch my son's high school baseball game. It's You can't even get a movie ticket these days for less than 10 bucks. You could offer it a $10 entry fee. Hey, we're having a big trade night. It's Pokemon night or it's a baseball card night or whatever. We're having a big trade night and maybe have some sort of entertainment there. Or maybe hey, we've got a Pokemon influencer that's coming in you know, Friday and Saturday and we've got this big event that we're doing. I think there's a lot of opportunity in that store to do live events, to have paid events, not just, hey, it's a free trade night. I think you spent, you have it's 10 bucks. I know a lot of father sons that would do the 10 bucks. It costs a heck of a lot more to go to and set up at a card show. It costs $10 to get into a card show. Jeff has the space to set up mini card shows in his store. His store essentially is a card show all the time. So these live events, it's almost like going to a card show. If you set up a trade night, you know, it's, it's, it's a trade night. Everyone's bringing their inventory. It's basically a, a small to mid-sized card show. And so I don't know if the live selling will 10x Cards HQ. I think that's going to be up for debate, but I don't even know if they necessarily need it to because there's a lot of different ways to generate revenue out of that store. And so do you think that Jeff is going to be able to build out, use that space effectively, have all the different things kind of cooking? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.